What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ordell and in today's video we cover a strong chess opening system for black against d4 with the English rat defense. Now some animal named chess openings are good and some are bad. This is one of the good ones. This in fact is a good option for you perk defense players and I know many of you are probably wondering okay wait how on earth could we ever play the perk defense? against d4 well guys the english rat starts out with the move d6 offering white the opportunity to play e4 taking control of the center but as a perk defense player that's exactly what we want for the rest of this game we're going to go after that center very aggressively starting out with knight f6 and after knight c3 continuing with g6 and there you go you're playing the perk defense against the move d4 and there's a good chance you're much more comfortable than your opponent in this position this d6 move is also a nice little move order setup for you Tartico or slash Kings Indian defense type players. I mean, here if white plays the move knight f3, this stops us from playing the English rat, but we can still continue with a move like knight f6. And after c4, I mean, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. I think most players would probably want to play g6, be in shadow of that bishop, and play a Kings Indian defense. However, the majority of this video, guys, is not going to be us learning how to play the perk defense or the king's Indian defense as a possible example against knight of three, but instead what to do against this move c4. I've been messing around a little bit with this move d6 as I've been playing the perk and king's Indian defense quite a bit. And guys, this move c4 is played quite often. I mean, white is probably thinking, okay, I don't know what you're trying to do with this d6 move, but I'm just going to continue to play with my normal game plan of c4, continuing with moves like knight c3 g3 or knight f3 but here guys we play this shocking e5 expanding in the center of the board i know many of you are probably wondering how on earth did solomon just call this a good and sound chess opening why can't white just take on e5 and then capture off this queen we're going to be covering that at the end of this video but let's first cover a few popular options from white which you may see quite a bit with knight f3 knight c3 and d5 just so that you're prepared for whatever comes your way and that you're well versed in the opening theory let's first take a look at this move knight c3 against knight c3 i honestly just think that white is making this game too simple for us we're going to take on d4 and then play knight c6 attacking that queen now there's a lot of different moves and squares that this queen can go to but a lot of them are pretty awkward i would say that the most popular is bringing this queen back to d1 and in this case we can play g6 via shadow that bishop we could also just play knight f6 and i the idea of bishop e7 continue to naturally develop our pieces and we're going to be more than okay at the master and grandmaster level however there is this idea of playing queen d2 which looks very awkward and it seems to stop the activity of this bishop on c1 but notice guys the very next move oftentimes white will play b3 here white's going look i'm trying to get some kind of development for my queen and fee and shadow of my bishop and in this case i like the idea of a5 and a4 whenever i see this fee what on earth is black doing well first off we're putting pressure on b3 and also eyeing the idea of a3 kicking this bishop around depending on what white plays the big question is okay what happens if white takes the pawn i mean if white plays a move like knight d5 okay we play bishop e7 and we're more than okay but what happens if white takes with the pawn pawn takes on a4 well, in this case, we're now going to play bishop e6. And as you guys can see, we're down a pawn, but white has some serious pawn structure issues on the queen side here. And we're going to go after these pawns for the rest of the game. If white plays something like e4, defending the pawn, it really depends on your preference. I mean, you could play a move like knight e5 or even knight a5, trying to gang up and win that pawn as quickly as you possibly can. Other players like to play moves like bishop e7 and castling kingside, keeping these as weaknesses and going after them later. And it really just depends on your style of play. So y'all, if B takes A4, we have that option of playing a move like Bishop E6 and then really ganging up on that pawn. We could also just play Bishop E6 and continue developing. It's really up to you. Now, what happens if Knight takes E4? In this case, I actually think that White is in some serious trouble after the move D5, trying to break this game open. Notice if White plays a move like Castle and Queenside, we can take on C4, evening out the material, and White's not going to be able to take back because of Rook takes A4, picking off that Knight. On top of that, we don't just have D takes C4 ideas, but also ideas such as Knight E4 attacking the Queen and Bishop B4 attacking the Queen as well. Let's say White plays a move here like Knight C3, hoping that we're going to take on C4, in which case White could simply take on D8, capture back, and White's going to be up upon. Well, in this case, we're not going to capture on C4, but we're instead going to play D4 trying to kick this Knight around. Notice here if White plays a move like Knight B1 or Knight B5, we're going to play Bishop B4 pinning the Queen to the king on e1 and if a move like knight d5 trying to defend the square okay we just pick off that knight and then play bishop b4 
Notice how a move like bishop c3 does not save the queen, but really just gives up another piece, and it's time for white to throw on the towel. So guys, in this position, if you see a move like knight c3, play d4, eyeing that bishop b4 idea, and black simply has a clearly won game. What happens here if white captures on d5? Well, in this case, we're not going to capture back, but we're going to play that move knight e4 that I mentioned earlier. And this position is kind of a trip. I mean, really, no matter where this queen goes, including queen e3, queen c2, or even queen d3, in any of those cases, we're going to capture this knight on a4. Notice here we have ideas such as rook b4 holding on to the knight. We also have ideas like knight c5 attacking the queen and bishop b4 check attacking the king. And here if white plays a move like b takes rook, okay, we play bishop b4 check, moving that king over, knight takes f2. That king's got to get out of the check. We're going to snatch off that queen. And yet again, guys, black's clearly winning this thing. So y'all, against this move, knight c3, simply take that pawn off, get a tempo on the queen by playing knight c6, continue to develop your pieces, and if you ever see this move b3, always keep in mind those ideas of a5 and a4 trying to break that game open. What about the move knight f3? Now honestly, from a strategic standpoint, knight f3 seems like a much more natural move to me because if we take on d4, white doesn't have to take back with the queen, in which case we get that tempo with knight c6, but they can simply take back with the minor piece, but we're still gonna kick white around here with e4, and if white goes to knight d2 or to the square of g5, in either case, we're gonna play f5, trying to take up as much space as we possibly can. And here, if white continues to develop, a lot of players like to play this move bishop e7 and try to kick this knight around, but honestly, guys, I mean, this knight on g5 is more awkward than anything, in my opinion. We have those squares very well covered, and I like this move c6, trying to limit the activity of this knight on c3. Most of the time anyways, white's gonna play a move like knight h3, trying to reroute that knight. And even if white doesn't do this, we still have bishop e7, knight f6. We're just gonna continue to develop our pieces. And here, if white plays a move like castling king side, we have a ton of different ideas. d5 is very playable if you wanna go with this move. Other ideas, and this is what I generally prefer, is playing moves like a5, knight a6, h6, king h7, just continuing to better our position. Maybe even putting that knight on a6 on c7 and eventually breaking through with a d5 option, looking at those moves and finding our time to strike. So guys, against this move, knight f3, against e5 with the English rat, play e4, f5, take up that space, continue to develop your pieces, and you're gonna be okay. What about this move d5 from white, advancing in the center? I mean, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. c5, knight f6, g6, bishop e7, etc. I personally kinda of like this move f5, just trying to take up as much space as we possibly can, and really trying to wipe out this fourth rank. Most of the time here, guys, you're going to see a quiet move like g3. And in that case, okay, we're going to play knight f6 and continue to develop our pieces. Again, we got those a5, knight a6 ideas, knight d7, eyeing c5. There's a lot of different things that we can do here, even bishop e7. But a lot of master grandmaster level players like this idea of g6 and bishop g7 followed by castling king side. I mean, really, this is a king's Indian defense, but you already have your pawns on f5 and e5, which is a big, big plus. Usually we gotta put a ton of work in to get these pawns here, and we got them there already at move seven. I mean, here if white plays a move like castling kingside, we can always go with h6. And now if knight e1 is played, trying to prepare a potential e4 move, we could play e4 ourselves, or even just continue with moves like knight d7 or queen e7, as well as a5 is always a good option in a position like this. So y'all going back to this original position of d5 and f5, as I mentioned, most of the time you're probably going to see quiet moves like g3. However, the best move for white, and it's not even close, is e4. I doubt you're going to see this move very often unless your opponent has prepared for the opening theory. But if you do see this move, I recommend taking off that pawn. And really the big idea here is that, okay, if queen h5 check, that really doesn't do anything because we just play g6. And now we are up a pawn but white is going to try to win this pawn back with knight c3 in that case. Okay, let's defend it. And if a move like knight g e2, let's play bishop f5 followed by bishop g6. Just enough time getting our bishop to the square so that we have one more defender. And if a move like bishop g5 pinning our knight to our queen on d8, we can simply bring our bishop to e7. We're prepared to meet h4 with h5. And if bishop takes knight, we can take back with the G pawn. This may seem very awkward, but the whole idea is that if white takes the pawn 
on e4 we're going to continue again with f5 i mean for example let's say white takes on e4 with the g knight okay f5 and after knight d2 again we have knight d7 or another natural developmental move these pawns are wiping out that fourth rank and on top of that we currently have the bishop here we have moves like bishop e7 and queen e7 on the way and we're going to be more than okay here so y'all, it's actually a big mistake going back to this position after G takes pawn for white to take back on E4 because we took with the G pawn so that F5 could be prepared. The best move here for white is actually H4. And in this case, there's a couple of different options. I think the most natural move for black is actually queen C8. Whole idea being that white wants to play H5 and then play knight F5 and really have control of these light squares on E4 and F5. After the move H5 and bishop F7, we don't want white. To play the move knight f5 which is why we have our queen on c8 why didn't we play queen d7 because queen b3 would attack our pawn so right now we're trying to hold on to both the pawn on b7 and that key square of f5 and now if white takes back the pawn okay we play f5 kick that knight back play a move like rook g8 as always we have that solid pawn here we have a bishop here as well i would actually say that white has the slight advantage here but again very playable game all the same ideas as before. And honestly, from a practical standpoint, I personally would rather have black. We always have F4 and E4 ideas in the air at a moment's notice trying to break this game open. And if you plug this position into a computer program, it's gonna tell you that the moves of Bishop D3 and Queen C2 give a very slight advantage to white, while everything else gives black the slight edge. I'm taking black here every single time. So y'all, in this video, we've covered some key moves that white can play, including knight c3, in which case we simply capture the pawn, knight f3, in which case we play e4 and f5, and the move of d5, in which case we play f5 right away, really trying to wipe out that fourth rank and take up a ton of space. Okay, to finish this video up, the main line, why doesn't white just capture that pawn on e5? Well, in this case, we're simply going to take back with the d-pawn, and we're going to be covering this move of queen takes d8. But first off, if white plays a move like queen c2 trying to keep material on the board, let's say you're playing against a higher rated player and they want to keep attacking chances alive, it's actually black that's in the driver's seat here. We're going to play knight c6. We have a centralized pawn taking up key dark squares, knight d4 and knight b4. Options are in the air attacking that queen. Here, if white plays something like e3, which by the way is arguably the best move, we now have knight b4 attacking that queen on c2 and white is in some serious trouble and we're going to have some great attacking chances i mean if you plug this into the leech database the most popular option for white is queen b3 but now we just play bishop f5 right i mean attacking that square on c2 we'd love to play knight c2 a check and if knight a3 defending it okay just continue to develop our pieces and here if we move like bishop d2 we're not going to run away with our knight but keep our knight right there with a5 and y'all this position is just probably not what the d4 player was quite expecting or wanting at move eight in the game notice by the way castling queen side does not work because of a4 continuing to push attacking this queen if queen c3 we have knight takes a2 with a checkmate and really that makes white's best option to get something back for this queen by taking on b4 we're going to capture back and here white just traded off a queen for two minor pieces we play queen c8 and guys i mean we're simply just winning this game and last, but definitely not least, why doesn't white just capture on d8? Well, in this case, we take back with the king, and black has pretty practically achieved an equal position if we play this correctly. I mean, if white plays something like knight c3, we play bishop e6, and I usually wouldn't recommend allowing your opponent's queen to take yours, in which case your king cannot castle, and your opponent's king can. But at the same time, I mean, what can white really do in a position like this to attack our king? I mean, if a move like bishop g5 would check, that's far from scary because of f6 and here if i play something like b3 we can always play c6 and give our king that square on c7 to tuck away and have a solid spot i mean here let's play something like knight d7 castle queenside okay king c7 if knight f3 trying to attack our pawn on e5 we play f6 and as you guys can see here there's just not much that white can do to try to fight for an edge here. If white does play something like e3, we're going to be the ones that start expanding on the queen side with a5 and knight c5. If something like h3, we can always play knight h6 and bring our knight back to f7. This is an option that some master grandmaster level players enjoy. And if white plays something like knight d2, okay, we continue to expand with the move a4, putting pressure on b3 and a3. And this move b4 simply does not work because we have a3 attacking that bishop whole idea being look you want to take my piece 
I'm going to take yours and also mess up your pawn structure a little bit. And if white plays a move like bishop a1, which is the best option, we play knight a6. And this pawn cannot be defended, so white really has no choice but to keep pushing it up. We play knight c5, and I would definitely say with this very active bishop pair and this rook on a8 supporting this pawn on a3, black has the edge here. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to see our video on the perk defense and the opening theory behind it, click that video to the left. If you'd like to see all of our animal chess opening videos, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.